another stage in our uh, well development here. Uh, we have the well pump sitting here. It's a Grunfoss uh, well pump. Um, really well known for uh, quality of their pumps. And uh, we're about ready to begin the assembly to prepare to send this down the well hole. We are using uh, a black <clears throat> tubing for the well pump as opposed to threaded PVC. Um, a lot of well pump installers use threaded PVC, um, but it's quite expensive and it takes stainless steel fittings in between the pieces. So this works just as well. Um, you can It's still rated for it, that kind of thing. You still use it. But when you do that, you should also install some kind of strain relief. And so for strain relief, I've got this vinyl rope uh, that's rated for about 500 pounds. And so we'll thread the rope through these little hooks here. And uh, that will support the well while it hangs, uh, or support the pump while it hangs in the well hole. And then, um, you know, between this and the black uh, tubing and the wiring itself, uh, the pump should be pretty well secured, so. Ordinarily, I would want this uh, barbed nipple, this threaded nipple for the black uh, hose to be stainless steel. Um, I couldn't find stainless steel, but it's, you know, it's, it's in good shape. And you, you can use um, galvanized on a well. Okay, so strain relief is really important. Got strain relief hooked up here with a couple of saddle clips used for cable but like I said between this and the black hose that'll be coming out of here and um, this goes at the bottom this goes in the water yes this electric stuff goes in the water it sure does how come it doesn't electrocute because the wiring will be sealed I'll show you This here is the pump, was a water level sensor. If the water level drops below this sensor, it'll shut off the pump to save it, keep it from, keep it from uh, <clears throat> burning. burning itself up. Now let's insert this bushing. You nipple. Get it in here. Next, we'll fit this <coughs> black pipe on here, but we need a couple of stainless steel couplings first. I mean, uh, clamps first. Woo. All right. Okay, next we've got submersible wire, and uh, this has four wires in it, one ground and three hot. Um, I'm sorry, yeah, a ground, I guess probably a neutral and two hots. Um, don't need all four of these wires, but this is all they had. <coughs> so I'll just blank one of the wires out. The size of your submersible wire depends on uh, the voltage needed and the amount of travel um, and how deep your well is because the longer your wire is, the more voltage you can lose over a certain length. In this case, you don't want to lose any more than about 2% of your voltage for every 100 uh, linear feet of well. We've got a 120 foot well, so it's not that big a deal. I just mentioned it in case you're planning on doing this yourself. First I'll crimp it and then I'll solder it. Sure, I can crimp it enough to hold. Yeah. Okay. So normally to seal these wires here, uh, would need a heat gun. 
uh, but I don't have a heat gun here at Contentment with me. Squeeze out, squeeze out, squeeze out, squeeze out, squeeze out, squeeze out. It's pretty good. Tape doesn't hold any water. <clears throat> Electrical tape does. Because it's rubber. But the ad el adhesive it holds. Well, drillers use electrical tape all the time. Mm. Duct tape, too. So, the next step is to go ahead and tape uh, the rope, the wire, and the tubing together about every 10 feet going up until we get to the full length. And we'll do that as we sink this, the pump. But the final connection will be the black tubing to another bushing, which goes into this pitless adapter. This is the pitless adapter. I don't understand what that is. Okay. In, in some parts of the country, the ground does not freeze. Uh -huh. as readily and so the well pipe the water pipe can come all the way up to the top of the well cap and out the well cap and then down into the ground or wherever okay in this part of the country the ground freezes can freeze pretty deeply okay so if you've got well water in a pipe above that frost It'll line break it. Well, it could freeze mm -hmm. right so instead, what you do is you keep the, the well discharge, the discharge coming up from the well, below that frost line, and this is how you do it with a pitless adapter. Inside the well casing, about six feet down, there's a hole that this fits into, and it mates up with it, okay? <clears throat> this is where the well water comes, and then when the well water comes out, instead of coming out clear out the top, it comes out through the pitless adapter into a pipe underground, which comes here to the shafts. Instead of coming above ground out the top, and then... How are you going to match that up when you can't see? Well, actually, you can see, and if you'll notice the way that's tapered, right here, mm -hmm. right here, there's a little receiver down there in the inside of the pipe that just slides right into it. Oh, okay. and how do you hold on with it to it without dropping it all the way down the well? Good question. This threaded end right here uh -huh. will hold a piece of pipe that you can thread into it and hold it. Do we have a piece of pipe? We do. We got a piece of pipe for it. Oh. So you actually, when, you, when you've when fed all this down and you're holding on to the rope, you know, your strain relief and stuff to hold it there, you'll then grab a hold of this and drop it into the pitless adapter. You use a strong piece of pipe so you can push it and wiggle it in, make sure it's a good tight fit. And then you can either unscrew the pipe or just leave it there if you want. And then if you ever need to work on it, the pipe's right there, you can just grab it, pull it up, unhook the pitless, everything else comes up with it. You grab the strain relief rope, you can pull it all up. This seems complicated. Nah, it's not complicated at all. So, you'll see. You'll see, Robert.